This is for Biology 223 Genetics. I want to talk about a um, very interesting paper that it is, was published in 2002 and um, a type of problem that can be uh, based upon it that like you'll see in some of the sample exams. Um, and importantly, that our standard problem solving approaches, the typical tools we might use to do a problem apply here as well. So the initial reaction of, that's really strange, I don't know what to do, just keep your feet on the ground and do the perfectly normal approach and you'll see that it's adaptable. So many of the tools we use are very generalizable. So this is um, Nature Genetics, uh, March 2002, paper by uh, Stuck et al. Uh, a bisexually reproducing all triploid vertebrate. That's a very strange thing. That's, that's, uh, I saw that title and I say, wow, that's, that's something to talk about. So let's, let's go through the first paragraph here. Green toads are common in the Palearctic region, that includes here and everything, um, Europe and Asia, where they have differentiated into several taxa. The toads, so that's the general broad phenomena. The toads exist with varying amounts of ploidy, similar to other aneurin species or reptiles. So ploidy, that is, or the haploid, diploid, tetraploid, so on, uh, similar to other uh, aneurin species, reptiles. Um, um, so vertebrates, uh, uh, I'm not sure if that includes snake, but I know it includes all sorts of lizards. In vertebrate biology, the very rare occurrence of Triploidy is coupled with infertility or unisexuality or requires the coexistence of individuals of different ploidy in a reproductive community. Okay, let's let's stop here for a moment. So we there have been triploids seen before, but they tend to be infertile or non-sexually reproducing, that is they make clones of each of themselves or uh, coexistence of individual different ploidy, that would be a tetraploid mating with a diploid, then the tetraploid would make a, a, a two n gamete and the diploid would make a one, eight, uh, one n gamete, and then the uh, resulting zygote and organism would be triploid and not expected to be able to uh, fertile without some other peculiar aspect. The reproduction of naturally occurring triploids has been reported to occur only through parthenogenesis, that's um, um, a reproduction without males in a, in, a, in a sexual reproducing species, gynogenesis, I'm not sure of the distinction, or hybridogenesis, which is the triploid with diploid. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the difference between parthenogenesis and gynogenesis is. The bisexual that is male and female, reproduction of pure triploids has been considered to be impossible because of the problem of equally distributing three chromosome sets in meiosis. That is, that odd numbers cannot be divided by two. Hmm? So this is a really, so far, interesting case. We have something presumably historically considered absolutely impossible. Here we report geographically isolated this is important because there's not any funny business where mixing is not occurring. It's a separate species, a separate breeding pool. There's just some sort of cryptic uh, mixing of tetraploids and diploids. Geographically isolated population of green, green toads that are all triploid and reproduced bisexually. So this is quite a, a nice case where there's something that is considered impossible and they find that it's not possible and they demonstrate a mechanism. So there's some uh, uh, introduction here in which um, there's examples of, of triploids being found and there are um, resulting from hybridization of diploid and tetraploid and then and this is geographic isolation, which is important to show that that's not happening. And then they manage to um, find a population where they were all triploid and they managed to mate them in captivity and that they produced viable offspring. So it's, it's not just they have observations, they did a, a, a demonstration. And to determine whether offspring of parthenogenesis, gynogenesis, we carried out 
fingerprinting, this is the stuff from previous chapters, what is that, or eight and nine, um, to show that they have uh, um, alleles both from their father and from the mother, from the male and the female parent. So the re mode of reproduction is not asexual, it is not parthenogenesis or gynogenesis. Okay, so um, then they, they come up with a mechanism uh, uh, of which two, hy so two hypothetical mechanisms, which are shown in this figure, sorry, it's black and white, in which the species has a triploid set of a chromosome. So any chromosome, there is a chromosome like we would have, one from our mother, one from our father, and a, except here there's three of them, and the third one has this nuclear layer organizing complex is absent. So there's two with a nuclear layer organizing complex that are positive. So there's something different about one set of, 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 of the set of three. For each chromosome, there's a set of three, and one of them is clearly different. And can be organized differently. So it's not as, it's uh, presumably transcriptionally um, relatively um, inactive or segregated and can be identified during meiosis separately by cellular mechanisms. That's not gone into here. So we consider the normal ones, the nuclear organizing region uh, positive. Uh, so two are that way and one is, is negative. So the mechanism they favor is in the case of the female this. So you see the symbol here, this is a female and this is a male. And so we have a triploid, male and female. The female undergoes where the nor negative is duplicated. So therefore it's a tetraploid intermediate during gametogenesis, uh, meiosis one. And then meiosis two, it's split in between, split and it ends up with a uh, diploid gamete, which is, has one positive and one negative chromosome. There can be recombination between the two positives. In the case of the male, there is first, a, a, in meiosis one, then it would be a, a um, elimination of the nor negative, and then in meiosis two, there, and there can be recombination, and then meiosis two, the diploid intermediate is the two n intermediate is is undergoes division to make a haploid gamete. So we have a diploid oocyte and a haploid spermatocyte, and that's the mechanism. Okay, great, fine. And the question then becomes, how does the how do we deal with genetics here? Let's give the so I have a problem here, which is and we're going to want to maybe look at this. So how do we consider, how do we handle this? Let's consider the question where we have two triploid toads using this mechanism as shown and without any recombination, well I mean without any um, uh, linkage, we can imagine that we have the female which is a big little little A, little 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 B and I'm underlining here to show the underline as uh, the nor the nor positive is normal and the uh, nor negative um, is underlined, so we can imagine it is big little 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 big little 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 big and so on and so forth, and we have the female of that genotype and the male of this genotype, and what would be the <clears throat> genotypes and the phenotypes and the frequency of offspring. How, how do we handle that? Well, we handle it just the way we handle everything else. Let's imagine, let's use a Punnett square. So let's use a Punnett square for A. So at A, we will have the female here can produce what kind of gametes? Let's see what she does. She, she produces uh, the nor negative is included always in her oocyte and one of the alleles of the nor positive side. So she can make big little or little little. And I'm underlining, so that's always included. And this it can be either 50-50, uh, equal frequency. And the male, the male then is going to eliminate that premiotically. And the male can make either big 
or little. So the resulting combinations are big, big, little, big, little, little, big, little, little, or little, little, little. Um, all this, 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 this. And phenotypically, that would be three quarters are big. So, so we see the genotypes, so one to two to one. And phenotypically, we would expect then, I'll do that here, uh, so we have big, big, little. We have big, little, little, one to two, and little, little, little to one. And phenotypically, we have three cases of the dominant functional allele and one case of the null. Uh, so I guess I should do it this way. So uh, one and four. Okay, that's fine. Let's see how it will work at B. And notice there's no reason to try to make some big Punnett square to treat each of these in independent assortment. It's the only way that makes sense. So at this, the female can make only one gamete, that is little b, um, little b, and the male can make big, oops, big b or little b. So we will have big, 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 little, little, and little, 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 equal frequency, and so we will have 50% will be functional B, and 50% will be uh, recessive. Uh, I don't want to say homozygous, uh, trimozygous, or trizygous, or whatever, recessive. Uh, at C, we can see that the female, it's going to be like an A, so it's going to be, in fact, we could generalize it just to do it that way, and we could say, ah, it's going to be plus null null, right? Or, sorry, I deemed that wrong. I can just say for any time it's, it's capital and dominant, I can just sell that plus, so she's going to be plus, she can make these kind of gametes. I'm going to make it generic. And the male can only make uh, the null. So we're going to get plus null null underline and null 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 underline. Equal frequency. This will be functional. This will be uh, try I guess uh, recessive. Likewise, so that's at C. At D we will see something uh, similar and let's look at that here because this is different. I chose a bit different. She can make one kind of gamete, little, big, and the male can make only little, so all of them will be little, little, big, and that will be phenotypically that, phenotypically uh, functional. And at E, the female will, can make, I'm gonna go back to this notation here, can make only this gamete, and the male can make only this gamete, so all will be this. So we see that just uh, dividing things simplifying things, following the mechanism, using a Punnett square, and just doing the obvious and not being flustered by something really strange like triploidy, having these triploid toads, needn't confuse us, we can manage quite well.